Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft. I am your humble host, see you later, and we are here in our uh, little underwater, underground uh, portal to the end. And as you can see here, I have found a couple of Wither Silk Skeleton Skulls, three uh, here in my hand, and then I've actually got two more back at the base, but uh, you can't do anything with two. You need three skulls if you're going to uh, spawn in a wither. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a wither fight, and we are going to do the super chicken uh, wither fight in the end using a trick where you bury the... Excuse me for the noise of the teleportation where you bury the head of the wither underneath the uh, end portal. Now, I've seen this done a few times and I think I've, uh, I understand what's going on, but it still could be a little bit dangerous if we were to, you know, uh, do things incorrectly. So uh, the idea is, uh, <clears throat> now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can go into the uh, nether and you can dig up to the roof of the nether that's one way you can do it and uh, if you go up to where there is bedrock at the roof of the nether you can then I think we need to go down one more you can then go and look for a place in the nether where the uh, bedrock is open to a, a 3 by 3 uh, area now if you do that which I have done that before and it does work quite well um, do I, think I need to go down one more um, it does work quite well, but it is a little bit difficult to find the 3x3 three three that you're looking for. Now, in this particular situation, we have some bedrock that we already know is in a 3x3 three three configuration. And that happens to be the bedrock that this portal is made out of. This portal is the portal back to home. If we were to jump in here, we would go back to our last place that we slept. But this portal is made completely of bedrock cannot mine it cannot break it in survival mode uh, unless you use some redstone uh, trickery with some TNT and and uh, piston headless pistons and things like that uh, or through the use of a mod or a data pack uh, now speaking of mods and data packs there is an interesting data pack that adds the ability to use a lingering potion of weakness to convert bedrock to a mineable block and uh, that's actually something that's very interesting and that I actually might be interested in uh, taking a look at in the future now let's see uh, if I am remembering correctly what we need to do is we need to uh, be able to place down the wither let's see I think we need one more space if I do this wrong guys we're in some trouble uh, but I'm going to go ahead and dig down one more block here. Uh, that way I can put down some obsidian in the shape of a wither uh, spawning platform sideways. Uh, let's see. And let me take a look. So what we want to do is if we look, see here are the corners. So we have one, two, three by one, two, three. So there's nine blocks right here. And this block right here is the center. So we, what we want to do is we want to place a piece of its obsidian right there. Okay, now let me back up just a second. Uh, if we do this incorrectly, uh, the wither will not be pushed up uh, into its place. So uh, let me just double check on some things so we don't make a terrible catastrophe and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and I did do just a little bit more uh, checking around just to make sure. Now, I do apologize uh, for the cut there, but I really want to be, uh, you know, this this always makes me a little bit nervous, and I'm actually going to back this up just a little bit here because uh, this is our, our little escape route. Uh, but I believe the most important thing of this whole thing is to make sure that this block right here, which is the feet of the wither, are going to be right under the middle piece of this bedrock and the reason for that is that's gonna put his head inside of that pillar 
So there is another block that you can't see right underneath there uh, where the head of the wither is going to be. That way he can't see us. He will start to take some suffocation damage, uh, which is okay. We're not going to be uh, uh, sad about that uh, because while he's suffocating, we're going to kill him. So let's go ahead and here goes nothing. We're going to go ahead and spawn in our very first wither. All right, and it looks like it worked pretty good. Now he's gonna explode, but he won't uh, explode any blocks. And I believe that because he's in the uh, bedrock, yeah. Let's see, we didn't actually, let me turn that down just a little bit. That's really, really loud. So hostile creatures, we'll just turn the whole game volume down uh, just for a second. Then back to game. Oh, it's still terribly loud, but okay, let's go ahead and get in here. But yeah, this guy is, uh, he's blind. He can't see us, and he is aggravated, but uh, he can't shoot us either. So we're just going to sit here and uh, take our sweet time and uh, whack away with our sword. Gosh, even though it's still so loud. All right, you guys, look at that. We got ourselves a... Wither invulnerable. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> but we have ourselves a nether star, which is what we were after. And uh, what else do we have? <laughs> we have ourselves a wither head. So thanks a lot for the uh, more mobs, mob heads. We'll add that to our collection now. What are we gonna do with all these mob heads we keep getting from all the cool mobs? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll make a little uh, mob museum or something like that. Uh, but I'll go ahead and put my helmet back on. This nether star is what we were after. Now, I said this is the super chicken method uh, because this is a surefire way of quickly killing uh, withers, as many withers as you'd like, one right after another, without taking any damage whatsoever over and over again. And, uh, you know, you might think, well, well why didn't you fight him in a straight up fight well you know i've been playing this game for a while and uh i've killed quite a few withers before and i'm sure with the armor that we have with all this protection and uh fire protection well i don't think that helps you but uh protection for protection for fire protection you know diamond armor i'm sure we could take them out i've got potion brewing and all that stuff too this way is just way easier and uh honestly um uh, taking a chance at dying to a wither is, is not something I'm interested in. <laughs> Super chicken method, like I said. Anyway, so we're here. We're back at the house now. And now that we have this nether star, what are we going to do with it? Uh, well, I have a plan already in mind. And that plan involves all of these blocks right here. So we have nine blocks of iron. Then we have 25 blocks of gold. 41 blocks of iron. And then, uh, let's see, I think uh, these two equal 80, uh, 81, 9 times 9 is 81, wait, this is supposed to be 49, oh gosh, I don't know that we have enough, let me see, uh, 8 more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we need to bring this total back up to 81, so... All right, so let's uh, we'll just grab all of these for now, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough, and we can craft a couple more blocks if we need to. Uh, the other thing we're going to need, let me see if I have here some uh, glass. I don't. I have put my glass into a shulker box, so let's just grab some, and I think what we need is glass panes. And if I'm not mistaken, we'll also need a little bit of obsidian. Uh, I think you need three obsidian so let's take a look at our crafting and see did we get any crafting recipes unlocked no we did not but I believe if we take glass panes and a nether star and put some obsidian underneath okay that's not the recipe all right so uh, maybe it is glass blocks let me see I'll grab some glass here and Let's, oh, there's the beacon. So it was full glass blocks, not glass plane, panes. So there we go, you guys. We have a beacon. 
And what are we going to do with this beacon? I don't know. Let's uh, let's see. Um, let's take it down in our mine, and then we can test it out down there. So what you're going to do, I want to just kind of show this for anybody who hasn't done this before. Uh, I've been wanting to get a beacon so that we can do some beacon mining. That's the, uh, you know, that's the real treat when it comes to beacons. So let me go down here to an area, uh, and I haven't showed you guys our mines in a while, but I just want to, I just want to uh, quickly do a little bit of a tour here. Uh, I spend a lot of time off camera mining, uh, just building up resources so that we can do lots of fun stuff. And I just wanted to show you guys, take a look at this. I have mined all of this uh, in branch mining fashion. So I'm just going to run down through here and just show you. Uh, I'm doing a little jumping here, hitting the space bar to go faster. We're still going. Still going. And just to here, I've actually branched off and started going that way. And, and that was the last uh, couple of branches down that way. And this way actually goes down way far this way as well. And basically, I just kind of go in random directions. And when I hit lava, I take a left or a right turn. And then I, I kind of go around in a circle and make like a, uh, make a square. And then I'll branch mine from one side of that square back to the other. So I basically do it in... Uh, in like a uh, you know like a kind of a random fashion but uh, one of these days I'd like to come down here and clean this up and uh, make it a little easier to get to the further reaches of our mines but uh, for right now I think what we'll do is I'm gonna go out to one of these areas where I haven't branched off in this direction and we're going to set up our beacon so let's just go down this way and let me see what was the reason behind me stopping down here okay the reason for stopping down here would have been because of the uh, because of the lava there and there's some caves here so let me go back kind of in the middle of this part oh let me eat something all that running and jumping sure does make me hungry all right so we're we basically what we want to do is we just want to clear out an area because we're going to do a little bit of mining in a little bit and uh, the area needs to be, I believe, uh, 9 by 9 at the base. And it's going to be 5 blocks tall. So we need to m mine out a 9 by 9 by 5 block tall area. So let me get that done, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, guys. So we have our uh, 9 by 9 area, and it is uh, 5 blocks tall. But there is one more thing that I forgot to mention, and that is that we need to have a line of sight uh, to the sky for the beacon to work properly. So I'm just going to center myself here on this block. And I'm not going to dig straight up because, you know, uh, as I've told you guys before in the past, that's pretty dangerous, especially if lava falls on your head or... Uh, or if gravel falls on your head, yeah, that could be a very unpleasant experience. So I'm just going to take a note real quick of our position. We're at 43, 448, 43, 448. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on upstairs and uh, go to the top and we're going to find 43, 448. And I'll actually dig straight down from up top. I think that'll be a lot more uh, beneficial for us. So I'll go ahead and head up there and be right back. All right, guys, we're back. And I did go up to the uh, above us here and uh, dig down uh, to it. And for some reason, <laughs> I miscalculated and we were off by one block. So the answer for that is we'll just move everything over by one block. Uh, so, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to build a 9x9 nine nine base of a pyramid. And then we're going to build, uh, so it'll be a 9x9, nine nine, and then the next block up will be a 7x7, seven seven, and then will be a 5x5, five five, and then will be a 3x3. Three three. So it goes 3, 5, 7, 9. And then at the very top of our pyramid, we'll place down our beacon. So, uh, let's see. Uh, I will start off with... Let's see, have, why does that seem like I didn't grab all the iron? Did I put iron in here? Um, 
I arrived. I did. <laughs> Quite a bit, actually. So let's start out. We'll just make the base of it out of iron blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll go ahead and fill this area in. Okay, so we've got our 9x9 nine nine area filled in. Now, as you can see, this is uh, 81. 80, 9 times 9 is 81. 81 blocks of iron. So this is super expensive to do. But I'm really hoping that the, uh, the benefits will be uh, uh, that it allows us to, uh, you know, to gather even more iron and mine a little bit more efficiently. So that's the first layer. The next one will be 49 blocks. So we'll go 1... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. By one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll go ahead and fill this one in as well. And yes, if you're wondering, this is just about every bit of iron and gold that I have <laughs> been mining up in the last few days of uh, just doing some branch mining. All right, that's the seven. Now we have uh, enough to make. Uh, let's grab a crafting table. Crafting table in here. I know I have one in this box right here. And you know, I kind of, I kind of wanted this to be, you know, <laughs> to make sense. Uh, so since we're mixing uh, iron and gold, now you can make these out of uh, other blocks as well. You can make them out of diamond blocks. <laughs> <laughs> you're super rich uh, and you can also make them out of uh, emerald blocks uh, I believe the only other blocks uh, besides diamond and emerald are gold and iron and that's what I've been kind of saving up for here uh, now let's see if I go ahead and craft this into I can get two more and that will give us let's see we need 25 so we Still don't have, let's see, I'll grab one more stack of, that's my emergency backup stack of iron. <laughs> so I should, I should probably not be happy to be using that right now. But yeah, so that'll give us 25. We'll go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Yep, helpful in your life to know your squares. Helps when you need to find the square root of a number and then our next layer will be i'll do the this up this will work out nicely i think it'll look nice too or, or for our beacon to be uh you know uh, iron and then gold and then iron and then gold looks like it, it'll look like it makes sense now let me go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and clear out just this little area right here because i really do want to see what this thing looks like uh once it activates and one of the reasons I'm so excited about this, uh, you guys may be like, okay, well, you're making a beacon, so what's the big deal? Again, uh, I would like to remind you that I have mostly played uh, this game in modded form uh, for the last, I want to say, maybe four or five years, to be honest. I uh, haven't really played vanilla Minecraft since, uh, I don't remember when beacons were added, but I think my last vanilla Minecraft was right at 1.8 and again that was about the same time i started getting really into the uh, modded minecraft so yeah i've actually never done this before in vanilla this is my very first beacon uh and i wanted to not make a small one i wanted to go all the way so here we go we're going to place down the beacon and we should be able to interact with the interface now oh there it goes it's already a beacon all right, and we got bring home the beacon and the goal of beaconator. I think you get that for making the full size, uh, uh, full tier beacon. So our primary power that we're going to be using is going to be haste. And I would like to get the haste two, and I will give it um, a block for payment or fuel or offering <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. And then I'll activate it. nice so if we look on our active effects we now have haste 2 and our diamond pickaxe that we have right now with silk tush is efficiency 5 and i believe 
uh, what I'm looking for only works with efficiency 5. Efficiency 4 is not going to insta mine uh, stone, but if we take a whack now, and I believe it works in a 50 block radius uh, around this beacon from uh, the center of the beacon out uh, 50 blocks uh, from the bedrock all the way up to build height. Uh, but we're going to mostly be focusing right here on this level, which happens to be level 11. And that's where I have the most luck uh, finding uh, diamonds. So we're going to mine our resources with the beacon here at a level 11. And let's just see how this goes. Whoa, whoa you guys. Look at this. Oh, this is so amazing. You literally it just as fast as you can touch the stone with your pickaxe. You are breaking blocks. This is amazing. So fast. So this is going to make gathering resources super fun. And look at that. And we've already found some diamonds. I'm going to go ahead and mine those up. Yes, sir. -y. That was a block, uh, a vein of eight diamonds. And I'm going to set down some torches here because what I'm not interested in is creating a mob spawner down here. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a great, this is a really great achievement. Uh, this is really awesome. Uh, for me, I'm really proud to make it uh, to this uh, point. I think this is a milestone uh, point in the game uh, because this is going to make for some excellent mining of resources and see we're already finding iron to make up for the iron uh, that we spent um, getting the beacon going and I, so I think this is going to be super worth it now uh, as much as I uh, as much as I do mine uh, I'm, I will pick this up and move it to other locations from time to time uh, when we need to uh, but but again I think for the time being I'm just going to hang out down here and do some mining and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out. I probably need to get some chests set up. Uh, the other thing that I would like to do just before we go is I'd like to show you I have also uh, Efficiency 5 Fortune. So instead of using the Silk Touch, I'm probably going to be using these uh, Fortune pickaxes because I've been mining with Silk Touch for so often that we actually don't have very much cobblestone. Almost all of the stone that I've gathered is uh, smooth uh, stone, you know, just like this stone here. And uh, I want cobblestone for doing some builds and for crafting and things like that. And we're actually low on cobblestone, believe it or not. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to keep the uh, one Fortune 3 Efficiency 5 Lucky Strike in my offhand and then the heavy hitter, which also is efficiency five, fortune three, uh, in my mining hand. And that way, while we're mining, when we pick up XP, we'll actually be repairing our pickaxes. And I believe that we can just keep mining and mine like all day long with this insta mine. Look at that. Look at that. We're just tearing up blocks like crazy. And it's not, it's, it seems a little bit faster when you're doing ores, but you know, not terribly fast. Let's see if we can repair our uh, our uh, precision sledge just by hitting some uh, blocks there. These redstone have XP as well. So yep, see the repairs as our as our uh, as our silk touch pickaxe bobs up and down. It lets us know that it's actually getting uh, repaired. So yeah, all right, guys. Hey guys, before you go, I just want to show you what I did. Uh, just had a little bit of a mining session for about, I want to say about 45 minutes. Uh, I took my time and just kind of went around exploring the reaches of the uh, beacon here. And yeah, cleared out quite an area and created quite a uh, mob spawner. <laughs> so I still have mobs spawning here and there. Uh, wherever you see these uh, dark spots, if I'm far enough away, there's another one right over here. So that is something that you have to look out for. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'm going to take this beacon down. 
But first, before I do, I want to run back over here. Uh, we're not too far away from, see there's the back of our smelter. So we're right by our, uh, our little uh, mine room down here. And I just want to pop over here, show you real quick. This is what we came up with in 45 minutes. We got one, two, three, and four. Well, three and a half uh, shulker boxes full of uh, cobblestone. And there was some stone. That's from clearing out the room for the beacon. And then a couple of times I mined uh, using the uh, silk touch uh, for the diamond ores. We got loads of gravel, dirt, andesite, diorite, and granite. So those will be super useful when we go to start doing some of our builds uh, a little later on in the series. And then in this last one, this is where we got all our goodies. So we've got two stacks of iron, half a stack of gold ore. We found uh, a whole bunch of redstone and coal that I ended up uh, crafting into coal blocks so, and uh, uh, block form for the coal and the lapis and the redstone so it wouldn't take up so much space. And even still, two full stacks and almost a half of redstone blocks. So that was a lot of redstone and a lot of coal and 38 I silk touched the diamond ores except for once <laughs> which was an accident I wanted to silk touch them all up because I want to fortune all of our diamond ore that we have uh, together on camera in a little bit later episode maybe we'll do that next episode because I want to see how many diamonds that we've collected so far I tested out mining up a little bit of obsidian and wow it goes really quick with the haste to uh to mine the obsidian and uh this was a little bit of the overflow some of the leftover blocks uh from setting up the beacon uh so i'll go ahead and throw this stuff in our smelter and we just do that right over here and let's see iron 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 gold all right, we'll throw that guy on now. That, that'll that start smelting those guys up. And in the meantime, while that's smelting up, I'm gonna put this stuff away. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this into our uh, shulker unloader. And this is where this is gonna become very uh, uh, useful. So if I put this in our shulker unloader and I go ahead and load it up there, You'll see it'll start unloading our, our shulker box and we'll see the items start th flowing through here. And then the sorter will sort everything out and put everything away and we'll get our shulker box back. Uh, and then we can use it to do that again. Now for the um, for these two shulker boxes, three shulker boxes of cobblestone, I'm not going to put that in the auto sorter system because... I, th I think we're just going to clog up the system with cobblestone. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and store those away because that's all cobblestone. So any other cobblestone that goes into the system will still have uh, plenty of the room in these two uh, double chests uh, for the auto sorter. Uh, for instance, uh, this one I will go ahead and auto sort. Okay, so that one will, when it's, when it's its turn for the unloader, It'll go ahead and do that one, uh, which is really cool. I love this unloader thing. It's really neat, you guys. Uh, I can just uh, plop them in there and forget it, and then the auto sorter puts everything away in the correct place. Looks like our smelting is almost done. Let's go ahead and send off the collection cart. Yeah, that's probably just the last bit of the gold getting smelted up there. Oh yeah, it won't smelt until after the uh, iron is collected. So let's get the iron it out of there got some stuff flowing into the system already which is great and that's going to do it for today guys uh thanks for coming in and watching us do some uh setting up of a beacon and uh you know we killed the wither set up a beacon and we did some mining all in one episode and i had a great time and i hope you guys did too as always thanks for stopping by hit the like button it makes me feel good. Subscribe. That makes me feel even better. All right, you guys. Have a great day. And I'm see you later. And I'll see you later. See ya. Bye-bye.